We'd finally arrived in Dominica after an unexpected 24-hour delay as a result of a tropical storm. A full day in travel had been in store for us, with us travelling all the way to Dominica's capital of Roseau to pick up our rental car. It was then another 40 minutes to our accommodation. The road leading to our accommodation had been an adventure in itself, providing us with some off-roading. There's a river crossing. And even a river crossing. It's safe to get across. Yeah. We were trekking deeper and deeper into the rainforest, well off the beaten tourist path. However, one more surprise lay in store for us. The road suddenly ended beside a raging river with no clear way across. What were we to do now? Two years ago, on the 19th of September 2017, Hurricane Maria struck Dominica with devastating effect. The Category 5 hurricane flattened much of Dominica, causing over a billion dollars worth of damage and claiming 65 lives. Much of the hurricane's effects were still visible at the time of our visit, including now. A road bridge used to lead across the several rivers which lay before our eco-villa, but the severe weather caused it to collapse into both rivers and access is now limited. Our hosts, Melissa and Andy, had come up with a fun and unique way to gain access to their luxury eco-villas. They installed zip lines. I'm not going across that. That's... After a long day of travel, Lewis opted for the more daring route of wading through the river whilst I took the conventional zip line. Slow, yeah. At this point, the rain became heavy, forcing me to put my camera away. However, I did film the journey on our return, so I'll insert that footage here to allow you access to our expedition into the rainforest. As I took the zip line, our luggage was hauled into a platform and transported across the raging current via a pulley system. I was glad I opted to travel light. There'd be no way we'd get huge suitcases across there. We crossed the first river and were met with a great expanse of field, flanked by thick forest rooted on mountains. We were in a deep valley. Around us was nothing but unspoilt vegetation, unlike anything I had ever seen before. At the end of the field, we encountered another river. I strapped myself onto the zip line whilst Lewis waded through his second river of the day. I've zip lined a few times before, but that didn't stop my body from trembling slightly. Okay. Safely over the second river, we were loaded into a pickup truck for the last leg of the journey. The narrow road snaked deeper into the valley, and I felt a sense of utter remoteness. We really were in the middle of nowhere now, and it felt great. It was quite incredible to believe that at the end of that journey was a collection of eco-villas nestled within extensive gardens of organic fruit and veg. Powered by solar panels, we were totally off the grid, in our own secluded piece of paradise. This was Banana Llama Eco-Villas. Here we are. Here's our bed, beautiful. We have our own mini fridge and some welcome drinks. And here we have the bathroom, we have the toilet. And we also have a nice, lovely bath. And we can go round. There's the sink. There's also a shower. Wow, what a lovely place. Here we have our balcony. Look at this lot patio. It's got loads of hammocks and seating areas and we have a lovely view out onto the river and are surrounded by rainforest and mountains. It is incredible. I just can't get over the view. So now I'm gonna have a beer and we also have some cashews. Yum. After arriving at our eco villa we had a moment to freshen up whilst dinner was prepared for us. Yeah. I'll take my shoes off. So you're comfortable, Oops. you settled in. You... Yeah, it's just beautiful, the place yeah. really is incredible. Yeah. I know. Yeah. You have to trick to get in, but once you get in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then, you know, to get to the good places, you do have to, it's a bit hard oh, work to get that. Our host, Melissa, or Mel for short, was formerly a chef working on luxury super yachts, and I couldn't wait to sample her cooking. Would you guys like anything to drink? Her partner, Andy, used to work as a captain, so they were quite the yachting duo. 
A rum punch sounds great for me. Dinner was to be served at the main guest house, which was right next door to our villa. Water, all spring water. Wow. Beautiful. There are actually three guest villas on site, but as we were here in low season, we were currently the only guests, so dinner was just for the four of us. Oh my goodness, wow. It's like a nature show, it's trying to catch them all. <laughs> oh, hello little kitty. You're so adorable. Hello. Kitty cat. What's he called? Kitty cat. He's called Kitty Cat. Oh, her, her ears are tiny. <laughs> she was a little feral kitten. Oh. Oh. She came in and the uh, little daughter. Oh, she's adorable. We've arrived at the lodge, the Eden Lodge. For starter, we have some bread, and here we have some guacamole, which Dominique grows avocado, so these will be local avocados. And I'm also drinking homemade passion fruit and rum drinks. It's a rum punch using passion fruit that they can bring themselves. It's so beautiful here sitting there. We've got the river just down there. I mean, it's a bit dark to see it, but let's have a bite. That is so good. Yeah. It tastes just like really pure and pure is the way I describe it. Our main course has arrived. Potato gratin. Here we have a kale salad with it was mixed with some cheese, wasn't it? Yeah, and here we have some eggplant with some mahi mahi and some tomatoes and pine nuts on the top. The food was incredible. We were even treated to a delicious dessert before returning to our villa for a good night's sleep. It had been a crazy yeah. two days, but now that we were settled into paradise, I couldn't wait to see what the next day would have in store for us. <laughs> <laughs>